serious? So thankfully for everyone watching this video, there's this character called Blue Maiden, and she likes to play Marine Cess. So Konami saw that and thought, huh, better put Marine Cess in the anime festival. Now you see, the thing is with anime decks, is that they generally tend to suck. Marine Cess, it definitely does not suck. <laughs> this essentially means that this festival, at least for me so far, has just been Little Timmy comes in with his Blue Eyes White Dragon deck, and then comes up against the Incredible Hulk. And the worst part about this is, well, <laughs> Konami decided to ban the biggest counter to this deck as well, the Kaijus. Because all Marine Cess does is it sets up one big unaffected boss monster and your opponent to try to get through it. Well, with Kaijus gone, the deck is just kind of, <laughs> it's going out of control. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get to the deck list, if you're enjoying today's video and see more content just like this in the future, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing down below. I still have a bunch of content planned this week around this game, including Morphtronic FTK, Dino Morphia with a couple of the Exo Sisters in it, maybe a new Xyz Festival deck, and a bunch of other new decks around Illusion of Chaos and Sprite packages and God knows what else. If you want to see any of that new content, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing down below. Alright, let's get into this deck list. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about the actual Marine Cess cards themselves, as I'm going to be honest, nearly every single person watching this probably knows what Marine Cess does by now. And if you don't, don't worry, watching the replays in this video will just show you how the combos work anyway. And if you still want to learn more, there's plenty of guides out there, including on my own channel, about how to play Marine Cess. So I don't want to go through all that stuff. I basically just want to talk about what is actually different between this deck and one that isn't in this festival. So this deck list, basically all the main hand traps have just been completely completely vanquished, as that's what the event did. You've got things like your Max C is just completely removed, things like Ash Blossom you'll notice just don't come up because they're completely gone, so they've just been completely removed and replaced with some more sub-optimal hand traps, but they're the only ones that are still available. We've still got one copy of Impermanence thankfully, but other than that, we've got Effect Veil, which isn't too bad, and I'm using DD Crow as well. The other hand trap you could use is there's still a Ghost left, which is the... This one here, which is a nice little negate, but it's not that great, and it's also an ultra rare, so crafting it for an event seems kind of counterproductive, but if you happen to own it, feel free to play it. It's an actual decent hand trap for this festival. Now, Konami was smart enough to some extent to know this deck list was going to be pretty damn strong, so they did put some limitations on it. We've got your Cyanet Mining to one, we've got your Blue Tang to one, we've got your Spring Girl to one, and we've got your Marine Cess Dive to one. So there are some limitations on this deck list that has made it so that it's a lot less, it was a lot more inconsistent. But thankfully, this deck list, most of it's, it's Link monsters, they just require water monsters to summon. They don't actually need the Marine Cess cards, and because there's a billion hand traps that have been cut out of the deck list, that's just a lot more space just to run extenders instead. So we're running your Four Mud Skipper, who can just make itself look like a Marine Cess card, so you can summon out your other Marine Cess Link 1. We've got things like your, where are they? We've got your Fishers, your Sharks. All these cards are just going to be able to extend and extend and extend, since this one on summon will search for this one and extend and extend. This one, again, just discard a water monster, summon itself to the field, search for this card, special summon itself. You've probably seen all these little packages before, as they're pretty damn common. All just a lot of special summoning extendery cards that make it to this deck list goes from being inconsistent to just being basically like nothing's changed. And there's a couple of other changes in here too. One of the main ones being, for some reason, Kaiser Colosseum has just been left unbanned. What? Why? They've banned like every other floodgate, but they forgot this one. <laughs> so this one, for those of you that don't know, basically means you activate it when you have your big boss monster on the field, and now your opponent can only summon one monster. That's, that's it. So they had to try to beat your gigantic boss monster with only one monster. It's, it's a pretty unfair card that shouldn't be in this particular event, so... I, I highly suggest, by the way, if you're playing this event, to run some back grow removals. I think a lot of Dark Magician decks are going to be around, which obviously don't like their cards being removed. And things like Kaiser Coliseum are going to be around too, so... But even then, <laughs> this card has a negate on it, so... It can protect your Kaiser Coliseum from being destroyed by things like your Twister anyway, so... I just think this deck was just beyond the best in the format by a long shot. The fact that Marine says Wave was just sort of allowed in here is probably the reason for it. If this card wasn't allowed, I think this deck list would be completely balanced for the event. I honestly think this should be banned for the event, and if I was going to remake the event Konami, just, just ban this for the next one, it, it shouldn't be in here. 
Alright guys, that's enough of me rambling. The rest of this date clip is all the stuff you've probably all seen before. So without further ado, let's get into the gameplay. Alright, so I'm going to be completely honest, these replays, they're not going to be the most exciting. And you playing this in the festival, it's probably going to be the exact same feeling. Because these sort of replays, because this deck list seems just so much better than 99% of the other decks in here, there's no real back and forth. A lot of the time your opponent will just see what you're playing, they'll see you set up this insane board, and they'll just concede. So the first two replays in here, they're literally just going to be that. It's not, yeah, it's not very fair for this event. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to summon out my Pascalus, summon my Man Mandarin from hand. Go into Blue Slug, add my card back to hand from Graveyard. This, by the way, was completely irrelevant. I definitely should have linked one with this one first, because this card is a... <laughs> this card can be used in the Graveyard anyway, so I should have added this one back to hand and put this one in the Graveyard. Either way, it doesn't matter. But yeah, that was just kind of dumb. Alright, summon out my Sea Angel. Sea Angel going to search for my Field Spell. Getting my Battle Ocean. Alright, summon my enemy. An enemy bring back from graveyard to a link arrow. Now I can summon my Mandarin, which by the way could have summoned from the graveyard, like I mentioned before, so I'm dumb dumb should have had that in there. <laughs> Go into my triangle, discard a card from hand. Oh sorry, my enemy's gonna um search first, or bring back from grave. Discarding a Pascalus, summon in the uh, or search for the Marine Cess Wave. You've probably seen this kind of combo before. Summon my Argonaut. Put all my little uh, quick quip spells, make this guy have a billion attack, set my Kaiser Colosseum, and now I have a negate, a spell and trap card negates. I have my Kaiser Colosseum, so my opponent can only play one monster. I have my Marine Cess Wave, which can target one of my opponent's cards from hand and just negate it instantly, and then make all my, well, make my big guy just completely immune to my opponent's card effects. So, good luck playing through this with whatever Dark Magician Blue Eyes deck you've got going on here. Don't even know my bullet, yeah, opponent doesn't even, <laughs> he doesn't even try. And this will be your experience during the festival. Thankfully going second, it's not obviously like that, but because your opponent's actually going to try and play. But going first, yeah, your opponent doesn't often try to play through it. Although, I did actually get completely shit stomped by a Utopia deck during this festival, so... <sighs> I mean, some, some people try to play through it, at least. It's not impossible to beat, and there's a lot of decks that are good into it. I just think it's a bit strong for an anime-specific sort of a festival. Especially when they've tried so hard to ban a lot of like the hand traps and stuff in this event. If you're gonna go that hard on a ban list, you should really make sure that the anime decks you're allowing in here are actually sort of all similarish power level, not just Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Blue Slug gonna be adding my Seahorse to hand. Looking the top three, if there's a marine test in there, add it to hand. Wasn't, so just special summon to a link arrow. Sea Angel, keep myself a search, grabbing the field spell. This is actually a crazy hand, by the way, because I had a bunch of extenders in here, and I had full combo anyway. So I could extend into an extra Xyz monster as well. Which I'll show you that Xyz monster in a second. Alright. It's actually a really nice free-to-play Xyz monster. So I'm going to discard, search my trap. Alright. I take a field spell before I do my summon. Summon my shark. Shark will search for my angler. Making sure not to summon the angler first, because the angler, once you've done it, you can't spell summon cards from hand for the rest of the turn. So that's the last thing we're going to use if we do use it. But I'm going to use this dude instead. So I'm discard him, summon this dude. This dude searches for my little fish from the deck. Or my, sorry, my aqua monster from the deck. Which, when searched from deck, can summon itself. Bring Summon off into my Marine Cess Crystal Heart, so I can make my big boss monster completely immune to card effects, even without the Marine Cess Wave. Equip all the things to it, and because this card is going to be used to summon any number monster, it can be treated as level 4, so my two level 4s go into your number 103. Which is a nice, it's a nice little card this one, drastically underrated. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can attach one Xyz material from this card and target one face-up attack vision monster your opponent controls, whose current attack is different from its original attack, and destroy it. If you do, draw one card. So if your opponent ever summons a monster that just has a change in its attack stat, you can just destroy it and draw a card, which a lot of decks do do that. It's not the greatest, but this card is literally an SR, so it requires like no crafting to do, so you might as well just stick it in here. Why not? Alright. It's not like we can summon Toad anymore anyway. <laughs> it was bad, man. My opponent had to make his Chaos form, assuming he was trying to play some sort of Blue Eyes thing or something. 
negate that, put my enemy on the field, which I then decide to block the link arrow for it, which kind of defeats the purpose of the card, since it's trying to summon cards to its link arrows. Actually, can it summon something to another link arrow? You tell them what's in the it says summon it to your zone, this card, no you can't. So yeah, I just completely blocked it off. Keep that in mind with this card, if you're going to summon this to the field, make sure your link arrows are empty, so I could have summoned it here and been safe, but I'm just dumb. Not that it matters, you already conceded. Alright, ready to play number three. Alright, these last two are a little bit more interesting. At least my opponent tried to do something. <laughs> Just feels like bullying playing this deck, I'm gonna be honest. This deck does not belong in this event. Actually cyberbullying. Alright. Seahorse, swap it over for my slug. Slug gonna add back the seahorse to hand. It's better summon Seahorse. Go into my Sea Angel. By the way, I'm not sure if um, if we're talking just tech cards in this deck list, I'm still not particularly sure what decks are going to turn out to be the most popular in the event. So I'm leaning more towards running back removal than things like Raigeki right now, but that might change. So just keep that in mind. These cards, these like sort of back row or monster destruction y cards are not set in stone. You can choose which ones to run. So just see what you're playing against and choose what to run. Alright. Crystal Heart, my card becomes immune. Didn't have to go into my Link 3 this time because I already had the, the wave in hand, so I didn't need to search for it. <clears throat> Alright. Some my dude, set my cards, and I think I just pass from there. Yeah, yeah, add back to hand, all that kind of stuff. Plenty of follow-up for future turns as well. Alright. And here goes my opponent. He was playing... Actually, don't... He was playing some sort of Predator Plant that had Infernity stuff in here? I don't really know what it was. I negated this because it's like the best Predator Plant monster. I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna let that go through. Now my opponent sets a bunch of stuff, activates this. I'm not gonna negate it with my dude. I'm just gonna use my Twin Twisters, Twin Twisters to pop it because it's a continuous spell. So that effectively negates it and he just concedes before it even happens. Alright, final replay. And this this one was actually a back and forth, because I think my opponent went first, and he was playing Dark Magician, so. A little bit more interesting this replay at least. Alright. Okay, so my opponent activates his magician's rod, giving him a search, grabbing his Dark Magician Circle, a magical circle. Placing a card on top. This guy was like, the, this card's opener was actually pretty sick for Dark Magician. This guy got everything he needs, which is like, kind of rare. Generally the deck doesn't get everything it needs every time, so. He got his full combo of a Dark Magician in hand. He's got his, uh, thing to summon it from graveyard or from hand using his circle. And he's even got the field spell for it as well. Thankfully though, he was a little bit greedy. Because I'm going to summon out my former Skipper, I think. So he could have just activated his uh, Eternal Soul here, activated Circle, banished it, and I would have been completely done. I would have just lost right there. This is one of the reasons why I think you should run more back row removal rather than things like Chalice. So I think it's probably more common for back row decks in this particular m mode, especially with Dark Magician being so popular. So maybe change Chalice for back row removal if you come across a lot of this stuff. But yeah, he decides not to, he decides to wait. So I'm going to use my Skipper to turn into a Marine Cess monster, so I can summon a Marine Cess on top of it. He then Fusion Summons. To summon out his the Dark Magicians, because he knows he can summon that card back from the graveyard. With his Eternal Soul. Summon out Blue Slug. Blue Slug going to add back a card. Go to Summon. Link off. Sea Angel, give a search. Just waiting for him to activate his Eternal Soul, because I have my DD Crow ready in hand. Activates his Eternal Soul. Tries to bring back his Doom before he does. Activate DD Crow. Banish his Dark Magician so he has no targets. Tries to use this. I'm not going like, give, to even give him the chance to draw into a card from this. I'm just like, nope. Getting rid of that. <laughs> 
Because from here, I know I can just win the game outright, so I'm just like, yeah. Or make it so that my opponent has nothing to do. <laughs> so I can't summon my triangle. Add back to hand. Discard, search for trap. Add fate battle ocean, summon my maiden. Silent angler. I don't want to destroy this thing, by the way, because if you destroy it, it will summon out a dark magician. Don't want him to do that. <laughs> I think it summons them from deck. Yeah, it does, so I'll just return that to the extra deck instead of destroying it so his eternal soul won't go off. And pass the turn back. Alright. Summons Rod, just gonna negate that. And from there, yeah, the game is just hella over. Unless he absolutely, absolutely drew some insane top deck, he's, he's not gonna have much of a chance. <laughs> he swings in with his Magistus, I don't know why. Alright. Summon my Pascalus. Special summon. He bounces, I think he tries to bounce this one. Yeah, he knew it was over. So I just summon it back again. I was trying to do a bit of BMing here, but I don't think he lets me. <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah. Alright guys, that's do it for today's replay, so hope you guys enjoyed them. If you did, remember to leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and hope to see you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.